top trolling from Hong Kong reporters wearing helmets and gas masks to an indoor police press conference. That's from Jackie C. Wong. The Economist, they chose to come and fight for the freedom of Hong Kong. They fired plastic bullets at us. Breathless from running, a young man holding a white flannel over his face shakes his head in disbelief at the response of the police. Outside Legco, a line of priests led the crowd in a chorus of sing hallelujah to the Lord. Others berated policemen for turning against their fellow citizens. One protester, Ricky, spoiling for a fight, said, Unless you come down and are prepared to take risks, don't come. Shouts of Gao Yao, a call of encouragement, literally translating as add oil, keep it up, rang as spare umbrellas and yellow construction helmets were passed up to the front line of protesters. Around 4 p.m., protesters barged their way past police lines into the Legco building. Police lost their pace, patience. Some fired tear gas canisters. Soon afterwards, they fired rubber bullets and small bean bags filled with birdshot. We can't believe this kind of thing can happen in Hong Kong, she said. Citizens trying to fight back, but we have nothing. Office workers joined the throng. One demonstrator, Zoe, argued that most people here, their parents wouldn't want them to be fighting with the police, but they chose to come anyway and fight for the democracy of Hong Kong. I've written about the periphery severally a long time ago in 2013, and I was referencing Xin Yang, and I stand corrected in that Hong Kong is not Xin Yang. Xin Yang is, they've managed to clamp down here to do the same clamp down that they did in Xin Yang is not politically tenable. That's the major difference in my opinion. But I did say that the tinderbox, the periphery is a tinderbox and Hong Kong is a perfect example. I also take you to that quote I love from Paul Virilio because it's so relevant today. The revolutionary contingent attains its ideal form, not in the place of production, but in the street where for a moment it becomes a motor, a machine of attack, in other words, a producer of speed. And you see that in Hong Kong. Khartoum, unfortunately, off the global radar. They're able to go and do what they did in order to clean up the street. Hong Kong, on a 24-hour feed, you can't do the same thing. This week's Economist cover says it all with a striking image, which now brings me to a very interesting piece in Bloomberg. Z assailed on all fronts as Hong Kong adds to Trump pressure. For most of the last six years, Xi Jinping has been largely free to define the terms of his rule. But with challenges piling up from the US trade war to mass protests, in Hong Kong, his presidency is increasingly being dictated by events. Events, dear boy, events. Harold Macmillan, I think. This is all on Z's shoulders, said Trey McCarver, co-founder of Beijing-based research firm Trivium China. Z has personally said he would handle relations with the United States. And at this point, he has failed. Those relations are spiraling out of control. In the worst case scenario, it would make it more difficult for Xi to back down. He would be seen as bowing to political pressure from Trump, from the administration, which is very difficult for him, given the standoff they've already embroiled in over the trade relationship. The dust up in Hong Kong is just one of China's peripheral, important point, headaches, where the US can play an aggravating role, fact. One senior Chinese diplomat recently told a foreign counterpart that Beijing sees the US actions as a challenge to the Communist Party's right to govern China, according to a person familiar with the exchange. You will recall Xi's decision to remove presidential term limits last year means he has nowhere to pass the buck. This was the point I've made severally. And I take you back, 27th of May, China versus US war, ballistic. In that article, I was saying Xi is on a pedestal 
and is faced with the strongman conundrum. The political brand will not permit a retreat, let alone a surrender. Um, so bear that all in mind. It's an extremely fragile situation right now. XPBOC head warns trade war could trigger competitive devaluation. The US-China trade war could trigger competitive currency devaluation across the globe and disrupt the financial order, China's former central bank Zhu Ziuchan said on Friday. He also said China should tap other markets because its exports to the US are set to fall as a result of the tensions. That could take about two to three years. And in the meantime, China may suffer from export losses that could put pressure on the yuan, he said without elaborating. And that's what I wrote in that article in May. If it all turns ballistic, as is my baseline scenario, and admittedly I was more negative before everybody else, then this is going to fly through seven like a hot knife through butter. Um, and they're going to use the currency as a way of pushing back. And if they do that, they're going to be pushing out an open door. It's clear that directionally, money wants to leave China. And a great deal, in my opinion, of the 2019 surge in Bitcoin is surely correlated to Chinese flight capital. Therefore, my prediction is that when the currency slides, it's going to slide real quick. And dollar call options are an interesting risk-adjusted trade. My first article in a series about this was on the 9th of July last year when I said tariff wars, who blinks first? And I was drawing the comparison with a chicky run, James Dean, um, both the protagonists race stolen cars towards the edge of a cliff and the first to eject out of his car is branded a chicky. And I was asking, well, who's going to be the chicky? China's industrial output growth slowed to the weakest pace since 2002. 15th of October, when we had the incident with the USS Decatur in the South China Sea, I said, war is coming. 10th of December, when we were meant to have that truce dinner, I wrote a piece about that and spent a lot of time looking at the menu, which was rather fancy. Uh, end of the year, I said the trajectory of the tariff war is another pivotal curve to keep an eye on in 2019. Have a listen specifically to the Q&A session from MindSpeak with Professor Howard French, um, uh, a scholar, a Chinese scholar, uh, journalist and really multi-talented and a wonderful man, deeply intelligent and cerebral. And uh, have a listen to the Q&A, because that's when we got more into the contemporary situation, trying to read Z's character, that kind of thing. Now, let's go to the other major geopolitical commodity market intersection point.